Hello, welcome everyone to today's first webinar. And over the next few months, we will hope to bring you a series of webinars where we aim to showcase our products and provide some insight into AMS farming in Australia and New Zealand. Now, throughout these webinars, we will be using terms such as AMS, which refers to automatic milking systems, FMS, which is Farm Management Support Advisors, Oceania, which covers Australia and New Zealand, and Astronaut, which is what we see here, often referred to as the A5, the A4, a robot, or simply the milking machine. Now, without further ado, I'm Briar Loveridge, and I'll be taking you through today's first webinar. Now, I'm a farm management advisor for Lely, and I've been working here for almost two years now. In my role, I support our farmers with optimising the automatic milking system and provide management solutions to get the best out of their farms, supporting with setting goals and working towards achieving these goals. Now, alongside this, we're there to do a lot of troubleshooting and simply answer any questions you may be. Now, since this is the first webinar, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to take you a bit of background about Lely. Now, Lely was founded in 1948 in the Slough Netherlands, where the headquarters are still there to this day. Throughout the years, Lely developed different products, such as forage equipment, to make farmers' lives easier. In 1992, the first Lely astronaut was put into operation. And throughout the years, as technology developed, so did the astronaut and its capabilities. In 2017, which was quite a big year for the Lely, they sold off all the forage activities. They celebrated 25 years of automation, and in 2018, they also celebrated 70 years of being in business. Now, at the Lely Future Farm Days in 2018, they introduced the next milking machine, the A5, or the Astronaut 5. Now, Lely has customers in over 45 countries, two production facilities, and employs over 1,600 workers. Their goal is to work towards a sustainable, profitable, and enjoyable future in farming and make life in the agriculture sector much easier. Now, some of the products that Lely have in Australia and New Zealand include the Astronaut, which is the milking machine, the Luna, which is the cow brush, and the Juno, which is a feed pusher. Now we've got a lot of people working at the back of the company and working in different areas. However, some of our main people at the forefront of the company include our sales team. They are there to answer any questions you may have and provide a smooth transition from sales to service. The technical service support team are there for servicing these products and also there for any breakdowns. Alongside this, the farm management team have a big role to play in not only supporting the farmer, but also supporting the, these other teams to ensure a happy customer. Today, we will discuss some common misconceptions of AMS farming. And at the end of this presentation, we will provide a way for you to contact us with any questions or comments you may have. Now, throughout the webinar, I've used customer testimonials that were recorded last, late last year to elaborate on some of these points, to give real life examples from farmers in Australia or New Zealand. So our first misconception is that you have to build a brand new shed. No, because the thought of building a brand new shed can be a scary and costly exercise. However, our team will work alongside you to provide options and designs that meet your, your expectations and goals. We have existing shed designs that work for many farm setups and that have good proven cow flow. We have farms throughout Australia and New Zealand that have integrated their old shed. For example, an old herringbone which has been used as a vet raised or draft area. On the other side, we do have farms that have chosen to build brand new sheds at different locations because that's what they want to achieve and that was their goal. Now, Simone and Phil Vines in Victoria, Australia have four robots and they thought that AMS farming was out of reach. So let's hear what they've got to say. We already had um, sort of drawn up some plans for a herringbone dairy and we actually went to the bank manager to talk about that and he said to us, I think that the two of you should look at a robotic milking system. I think like many people, we just assumed it was out of reach for us, that it was some sort of luxury. And when we looked at the price 
and looked at what it would have cost us to build a brand new conventional dairy, there wasn't a lot of difference at all. And I think we were quite surprised at that. So you never know, just simply get in contact with us and um, no obligations, just have a chat and see what you want to achieve and see how we can help. So with automatic milking, there does come a time for a computer, time to use computers. Um, farmers do express how they frustrate they get with computers, but that does not have to be the case. Now, Laylee has a program that supports a system called Time for Cows, or often referred to as T4C. It's very user-friendly and support is provided to our customers. And the amount of data, data available in the program does not need to be overwhelming. Our farm management team are here to support you and help you understand the computer and the data in the system. We will work alongside you to achieve the goals and help analyse data, using the data that is most important to you. Now, now some of the data is, can be on cow level or herd level. Data collected includes production, milk composition, cell count and room, room pH, just to name a few. It allows you to make informed decisions over long times. Rather than just using a herd test regime that only delivers a snapshot of just one day in the life of a cow. Um, and it's about monitoring key areas which can be set up to rank cows. Now we, we hear from Joanna Crack in Southland who shares her experience about starting up with AMS and the support she got. We found the uh, farm management support from Laylee to be really good especially when we were starting up and when we really needed it. They were there and they were there to answer questions. If they weren't physically on farm, then they would be logging in to help with, you know, maybe some, something we didn't understand in a report or whatever. But yeah, they were just right on the job and plenty of advice, not just robotic advice, but also general farming advice as it pertains to a robotic system. So as, just to elaborate on there, we're not going to, we're there from pre-startup to startup day to following up and even to this day still getting in contact with our farmers, checking in, seeing how they're going and just simply answering any questions they may have. Now another misconception that we've heard quite a bit is that my cows aren't suited to robots. Now a variety of cows have been proven to be milked through these systems throughout the world. As mentioned before we've got customers in over 45 countries. So that's a lot of cows and a lot of different breeds. So the Lady astronaut comes in a standard box size. And to follow on from this, which we see here is a standard box size. Now a juicy kit can be added on to ensure a good fit for your herd size. This helps with reduced cow movement in the box and better, con uh, better connections. A good added confirmation is a bonus to the system, however, in T4C, we've got the ability to mark a cow as only having three milkable quarters. So when she goes into that robot, they talk to each other and they know not to milk, for example, her left rear. So those high producing three to the cows that are in your herd, they can stay there. And then astronaut technology includes a 3D camera and lasers, which help detect the positioning of the cow, making it easy to cut the cow. There's been intensive testing done on the astronaut to simulate things like cows kicking off the cups and cows moving in the box. The robot arms moves with the cow and will rescan and reattach any cups that have come off. And prior to startup, our FMS team do a liner assessment, which is to ensure the correct size, size liner is used for optimal udder health for, for purpose. Now, as shown before, this picture here, we see on her neck, she's got a collar, which we've got a respond, responder reader just above her neck there, the 3D camera um, above her back legs. And as she moves, she's actually getting weighed on that weigh board underneath her. So the robot um, also detects that as she steps side to side and it will move freely with her. Now, losing touch or not noticing when your cows are sick or injured can be quite concerning. However, we've got customers they have actually had more time to look at their cows and notice more abnormalities. It's all about spending time where it matters. Time for cows and apps such as in herd alert you when a cow is possibly sick and needs attention. Lady is all about happy, healthy cows. 
Now we've got the Turner girls that have four robots north of Auckland share their experience about the system and how they were first worried about losing touch with their cows also. Like I think a lot of people think that because they're going through an automated system that you're not uh, in contact with them as much but the truth is without the distraction of having to stand there and cut cows you notice a whole lot more like when mm. I go into the shed to look at my cows that's all I'm doing mm. I'm focused completely on them and so even if a lot of the time the robot will pick it up a few of the times um, I will in the shed and then you know so some sometimes it's just because I'm around them more or because they're more comfortable they're so relaxed that it's so easy to pick up on any kind of unusual behavior and then other times the robot picks up on things that i'm really surprised it even did i had one cow who always comes in she comes in maybe every six hours and she always does and the robot alerted me because she hadn't come in for 11 hours and then i realized she got stuck somewhere so things like that are brilliant the system of detecting yeah. mastitis or lameness or anything like that is so much quicker mm -hmm. that you get on top of it yeah so much faster so we really had like you get like one or two clinical cases yeah. of mastitis not not nearly because I mean in an old system you don't know really about it until you see the docket and you see a spike yeah. and then you you don't know who it then is you, then you're looking around and so you've got to strip everyone out and yeah. find out who it is whereas on here it'll tell you who it thinks it is before you you, you even would even see, see it. it, yeah. Now mastitis and somatic cell can, can be quite a big issue on some farms um, and they want to know the source of it. And as they said there, they're not having to do herd testing um, that because the data gives you cow level data on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, these settings which allow you to test the cow every single day or every time she gets milked or every third milking, which is smart. Um, and alongside this, you've got this stuff like the collect cow list that shows you how long a cow's been away from the shed. So people ask, so I've never got to be on farm with, if I put one of these in. No, this is not true. Uh, so the astronaut takes the labor away from the farm, you know, and standing on concrete, milking cows um, for six plus hours a day. It does does the whole milking pro process from um, pre-milking, the pre-milking, which is um, brushing the cow, uh, promoting uh, milk let down, to cupping the cow, to milking the cow and removing the cups, um, to post-milking where the cup, cow is actually teeth sprayed and then let go. Um, and now one of our other products, our grazeways, that's where she goes through a grazeway and is drafted to the allocated grazing area or to draft her insemination if that's where she's required to go. Now farmers still have responsibilities such as daily routines which include maintenance, cleaning, dealing with any cows that need attention um, such as insemination cows, treating cows or just simply drenching the cows. However, it does mean that you can spend time where it matters with your family, your friends or other important things. You're not missing out on um, kids sports games or birthdays and stuff like that. So automatic milking systems provide flexibility in your day. You're not rushing back to get your cows milked. Now we've got Simone and Phil Vines again who share how their lifestyle has changed since going to A. When we put in the robots, um, I was an office girl. I had an office job. And um, there was just something about this system that uh, changed me. <laughs> I um, left my job and now I own a pair of gumboots and I potter around the farm all day, seven days a week. I just love the system. And the biggest change for me, apart from giving up my day job, was that we eat breakfast together as a family and then we put the kids on the school bus and then we start our farming day at 8.30. Now I'm off a farm, I never had that with my dad and I love that our kids get to see their dad every morning. Now again, that just provides um, some insight, that it just provides flexibility in your day. Um, so yeah. Now lastly, one of our last um, misconceptions is re around reproduction. Now reproduction is a really important task on any dairy farm. You set targets and you want to reach those targets. Therefore, reliable heat detection is essential. 
on T4C, the program, there's reports which shows cows that are on heat. It then shows the time of the onset of heats and the optimum, optimum insemination window. Alongside this, it shows you where she is in that window so that you can inseminate her at the right moment. So these settings that can also be adjusted in T4C to increase the sensitivity of heats. Um, and there's also other settings for routing that activated so that when she shows an active heat, then she's caught by the grazeway and routed to the insemination to be there ready for you. Now, bulls can be used in the system because people think they can't. Um, and there's many different options to keep these bulls. So you can keep them in the different sections of the farm, such as having three bulls if you've got area A, B or C. Commonly, cows have a collar attached to them and they can walk freely just with the cows um, and walk through the system. In most cases, a bull will be routed at the entry grazeway and sent straight back to pasture. But if the bull, for some reason, needs to go through the robot or gets caught up in the robot, the astronaut knows that it's a bull and will send it straight out. So here we see one of our bulls on one of our lady farms, Big Red. Um, you can see he's got his collar on and he's enjoying a big scratch from one of our lunars. So thank you so much for your time today. Um, if you've got any questions, be sure to email them to Laylee, A-U-S at Laylee.com. And if you've got any questions, want to get in contact with myself or any of the sales team or any of the other farm management team um, members, Get in contact, um, check out our the YouTube channel, channel and search Lady New Zealand Australia if you would like to see any more um, real life um, Australia, New Zealand testimonials um, or if you simply want to visit one of our farms, uh, we're more than happy to take you on one of them too. So thank you very much for your time um, and yeah, keep an eye out for our next webinars coming up.